This weekend, 25 of the best Dutch battlers and inadequates faced off in the Sylph Regional Championship. This tournament is quite high stakes as the winner secures a ticket to the European Championship, which is the next stepping stone to go to the World Championship and prove you're the very best. Today, we'll be looking at this tournament from the winner's perspective. Thank you, Inadequance, for sending in these battles. A lot of you might already know Inadequance. He live streams on Twitch, also has a YouTube channel, and I don't really like saying it, but He's a pretty decent battler too. He's known for being one of the first to hit legend in many GBL seasons and his most recent YouTube video is also quite impressive. He managed to go from 1800 ELO all the way to legend in one weekend. So I can highly recommend you check out his YouTube and Twitch channel for high level gameplay. Now that same weekend he managed to gain 1200 ELO to gain legend. He also won the Dutch... Silverina Regional Championship, and that is what we're going to be focusing on today. The tournament is ran in the Sylph Architect meta, which is a whitelist based format. The meta team basically picked like 50-ish species you can run, which creates a pretty shallow meta, but also a very good one. I did a couple practice tournaments in this format, and it's extremely fun. The, the Pokemon were picked so carefully that there's barely any like rock, paper, scissors games going on. Always very dynamic matches. So I think we're gonna see some very fun games today. Uh, Inadequance is running a team of Milotic, Sudowoodoo, Drapion, Frostless, Pelipper, Beware. These are basically some of the top Pokemon, especially Drapion, Frostless, Pelipper, Beware are four we're probably going to see return a lot. Milotic and Sudowoodoo, a little uh, more spicy, but good anti-meta. His first opponent, Triptanda, will be running a squad of Shadowmuck, Polyrath, Frostless, Drapion, Celio, and a regular Chaos form. Pretty standard line as well, except for the Celio and Chaos form, which are actually kind of spicy and pretty good against uh, Inadequous' team as well. That Chaos form can cause some trouble for the Pelipper, the Frostless and the Milotic, and the Celio, I don't see the Celio causing much issues to be honest, but that Body Slam spam is real for sure. I think main thing Nanakun should be worried about is that Polyrath, as he really only has like Pelipper for it as a hard wall. Polyrath can really do a lot of work versus everything else. Anyway, let's see what uh, Inadequance decides to do. In this first battle, we see Pelipper against the Shadow Kanto Muck. This isn't great because uh, Muck does pack Thunder Punch with 10 basically one shot uh, Pelipper. And then Inadequance also has Malorik in the back, which also doesn't really want to take a Thunder Punch. But luckily, Muck isn't like super, super tanky, so he can take it out with teamwork, which is exactly what Inadequance is doing here. Weather Ball at first, dipped into the Malorik, which can tank this Thunder Punch. And now he's just playing on Dragon Tailing down. Probably expends his shield right here. He does, so he can farm this down and have energy loaded for whatever comes in next. A uh, trip down though doesn't allow the full farm down though. Comes in a cast form. Nanakun throws the surf here right before the cast form gets to the weather balls. Only three hexes for the weather ball. So I had to throw it too, which he did. Getting to another surf here. This is pretty huge. Gonna do a decent chunk uh, onto this cast form. Actually, a CMP tie. Uh, as well. I'm actually surprised that Cosrum lo lost that since my Lodic is quite bulky. I guess Cosrum is super bulky as well. Wow, brings in a Sudowoodle here. It's quite interesting. Uh, well, actually, it's it's it makes sense since you don't want to take the Weather Balls on Pelipper. But Cosrum can also pack Energy Ball, which will do a ton of damage uh, to a Sudowoodle. Calls another bait there with the Weather Ball. Wow, keeps a Sudowoodle alive and with a lot of energy now. What is in the back? We've already seen the muck. It is the Celio. And oh, this is where Sudowoodo does quite well too. Triptana tries to catch a move. Doesn't work out. Sudowoodo has two rock slides now. And we'll be able to fire these back to back to likely take out the seal at this point. Yes. Rock slide comes through. Does this knock out the seal? It doesn't, but he should be able to rock throw down. That is a good first game. Next game, we see Sudowoodoo into the Celio. It's a really good matchup for Inadequance right there. In comes the Polyrath. This is exactly what Inadequance wants to see. Gets his Pelipper aligned to this Polyrath, which Pelipper is basically just a hard wall to this thing. Skull does do a decent chunk, but not that much. Gonna throw the Hurricane on the CMP pie right here. Will this knock out the Polyrath? 
Yeah, no shield. Knocks it out. Probably gonna come in with a Celio now. Celio is a decent answer for Pelipper since you just up ace uh, with the body slams and Pelipper really has to uh, hit a hurricane to do any decent damage. Wow, Hurricane would do a lot, so actually dares to go for the bait right here, expecting a shield. And no shield comes up. Really good call from Tripton, though. Uh, right there. Probably plan, plan to sack uh, the, the CDO anyway, knowing that it can't do that much versus the Sudo Voodoo. Another we weather ball coming through. That's a decent chunk uh, to the CDO. Definitely gonna come in with the Sudo Voodoo here. Triptonda throws a move. Could this be the Water Pulse? And Eloquence does think so. Shoots it up. Great shield since it was the pulls. In comes Kanto Muck. Kanto Muck also doesn't have a great matchup versus Sudo Voodoo. Sudo Voodoo really is a great core breaker in this meta. As you can see, it does well versus a lot of the top meta picks like Muck, like Drapion, like Frostlass, like Pelipper. Celio wouldn't really call top meta pick, but it does well there too. And I think that's exactly why Nenequins has it on his squad. Not the bulkiest thing though, so this Thunder Punch will do a decent chunk. This point though, can bring in the Frostlass and probably farm this down. Actually goes for the move to take this shield. Uh, Muck also has extra Dark Ball, so if he gets there, uh, the Frostlass probably dies. Uh, but then he should be able to farm down with the tree. Is it the Dark? It is a Dark Pulse. It does kill the Frostlass, but luckily the Sudwudo has a Rock Slide ready uh, for the Celio, which will take out the Seal, and then he should be able to Rock Throw down the Muck another good game in eloquence has already won two games so won the best of three but in this tournament every win can count if at the end of the tournament it comes down to a tie the tie will get broken by whoever has won the most battle so ideally you want to go 3-0 each round to secure yourself a chance of winning the tiebreaker uh which well in eloquence is off to a good start for the three hour with the pedal brain to the polar wrath Kryptando switches to the Drapion, and Eloquence gets the Sudowoodoo aligned exactly where he wants it. This is not an amazing matchup for Sudowoodoo, just because Drapion does have access to Aqua Tail, and these do chunk, uh, but Sudowoodoo does generally win this, especially in the Zero Shield. As you can see, it survived the two Aqua Tails, now able to get to the Rock Slide. Does this take a shield? It does take a shield uh, from the Drape. Not able to farm down, unfortunately. Gonna come in with his own Drape, planning to farm down this thing, most likely. Getting hit by a crunch doesn't do that much. Getting hit by another crunch. Yeah, Drapion was so super spammy. Actually, it's an Aqua Tail uh, this time. I think Crunch and Aqua Tail do about the same, uh, which is why Trip went for the Aqua or for the Crunch first. Just hoping for the debuff probably, but unfortunately for him, didn't get it. All right, it's a Kanto Muck in the back. Thunder Punch will one shot Pelipper at this point, but the Pelipper does have a shield advantage, which makes this not that bad. One weather ball coming through. Are we gonna see a shield from Trip right here? We do. And this allows the Pelipper to go for the Hurricane, but not before the Muck reaches a move. And Eloquence is really gonna have to be careful with this energy management here. The farms up to the max, goes for the weather ball. Will this kill the Muck? It does. And now he should be able to get to the Hurricane first. The Polyrath to take it out. Very well played by Eloquence here. Really great energy management on the Pelipper wins him the game, GG. Next round, Inadequence is up versus Mencinic, who's running a very similar team to Trip Tondo, just ex exchanging his Trapion and Polyrath with Pelipper and Sudowoodoo, which gives Inadequence's Sudowoodoo a ton more plays, since it doesn't have the Polyrath to worry about. We saw Inadequence already bring the Sudowoodoo a lot versus Trip. We're gonna see it all three games against Mencinic. I expect, since there's no hard counters, unless Mencinic Sudowoodo is running counter, but most run a rock throw, so that is what I'm expecting. Uh, besides that, uh, the Malodic looks very good here, the Beware looks pretty strong, really only has to worry uh, about the Pelipper, so I'm expecting to see like Sudowoodo Beware core from Inadequins here, and probably a lot of Muck uh, and Pelipper, uh, and probably also Sudowoodo from... Uh, Mensnik's side. Let's see what happens in this first game. We do see Beware in the lead here. This is a strategy I really like because uh, Beware can just super power and dip uh, so nicely to clear that debuff. Uh, throws a super power immediately. One small thing you might have noticed there, Inadequence actually waited a turn before throwing the super power. Wanted to make sure the opponent couldn't catch the super power, so threw in the middle of a powder snow. Really nice, small, subtle play 
right there then switch it to the sudowoodo shield the water pulse and now the opposing sudowoodo comes in uh kind of waits a bit too long with throwing the rock slide to be honest has to use a shield now because of that but he might still be able to get to two rock slides of its own right there gets to one at least which a Mensnik does let go what comes in now from the opposing side Pelipper comes in. Oh my god. Well, I'm not too sure about that. You're gonna have to eat a rock slide or use a shield. And a shield it is. And Eloquence doesn't want to get far on down. So brings in the Frostlass here. I think the timer might barely not be up yet for uh, for Mensnik. So we don't see a switch. See a switch now, though. Uh, and Eloquence knows that he's still a ways away from the water pole. So over farms a ton before throwing the Shadow Ball. I don't think this knocks out. It doesn't. But can get to the evidence to knock out this seal. And now this Pelipper or the opposing Pelipper is going to have to use energy to take out Frostlass before it can reach the avalanche, which might open the gate uh, for Beware to finish off the Pelipper. Let's see. And Sudowoodo still alive as well, of course. All right, in comes the Beware. Is he going to reach the Stomp before the Hurricane? Actually tries to catch a move on the Sudowoodo. Doesn't happen, but does put it in range where Stomp easily knocks out the Toilet Bird. And this is a good first game. GG. We see an opposing Sudowoodo on the lead onto the Shadow Drapion. Not ideal, uh, but Shadow Drapion actually is a decent matchup here. We saw in the last match, Triptondo's uh, regular Drapion wasn't able to kill Sudowoodo with two Aquatils with Shadow Wood. Uh, so Mensnik actually decides to shoot the first one. And then Inokin switches into his uh, Milotic luring out uh, this cast form. I think so far this is going exactly like Inelicons was hoping to because he just lured out one of the hardest counters to Frostlass. Shields up that moves that move as well, which allows him to get to another surf right here, which would kill uh, the cast form or take another shield. Takes it out, which is uh, quite good because now he can get the alignment uh, like he wants it to. And the Milotic is still super, super healthy. In comes the muck at this point. This is not too bad. You can hit a surf here. This will do a good amount of damage. Yes, it does go through. Switches into the Drapion. Isn't waiting around. I love these aggressive plays. I think this meta, this Architect meta, really, really allows you to make a lot of aggressive swaps. And we see another one coming in right here. Immense Nick brings out the Sudowoodo. Rock slides to... Wow, the Drapion Inelicans brings out the, the Frostlass into a rock type, which is kind of mad. But uh, these. Wait, is it, wait, is this counter? Dude, I didn't even notice. How did I. How did I not notice that last round? It's counter. Oh my god. Alright, it's actually counter. That's why the Sudowoodo got to the move so quickly last round. Oh, it all makes sense now. And that's also why he didn't bring Sudowoodo this game. I was kind of confused why he didn't bring Sudowoodo again. Since Rock Throw Sudowoodo is so strong. But it's because Mensenik is running counter, not Rock Throw. Alright, well pay attention. I should pay more attention, I guess. Oh well. Well played. Really well played by an eloquence right there. Next game, he does bring the Sudowoodo again. And luckily, it's not aligned to the opposing Sudowoodo. Because, well, we just learned it has counter. This is also not a great matchup, though. Since... Cast form does learn energy ball and it will do a ton of damage. Shields it up though. Great call from an eloquence. Where are we gonna go for the rock slide here? This wouldn't kill the cast form, but would uh put it kinda low. So we do see a shield coming up from Mansonic here. Inadequance switches out, catches the move. Is this gonna be the resisted energy ball? It is. That's a great catch from Inadequance there. In comes the opposing Sudowoodo, uh, which by the way, guys, has counter. Uh which means this thing actually gets to the moves quicker than the regular Sudowoodo or the Rock Throw Sudowoodo would. Uh, so they're actually going to CMP tie on this move. Drapion apparently wins that though. So this is a good uh, scenario for an Anakin to be in. Probably going to let this go and just hope to sweep with like Frostlass or or whatever. Since Frostlass is a shield up uh, and the cost form is already very low, basically most of... Uh, Mensnik's threats to Frostlass are gone. After his Frostlass kills the pseudo and then it kills the, the cast form, it can basically just kind of sweep. Main issue would be maybe like a CDO in the back. That would be the, the biggest problem right now. He can overfarm a bit here, but he, he doesn't go for it. A bit afraid that the 
the call sure might be at a weather ball already he could have technically over farmed by one though oh shit in comes the frost test now yeah this is very good he didn't even need to over farm with the frost test i guess since he has a sudabudu to just clean up the opposing frost test right here and it is a another good game a lot of tree action in these battles and you can just see how strong that thing really is in this in this meta and inadequance is making really good use of it gg in round three inadequance faces yes i'm 36 so what was running a very similar team to the previous opponent just exchanging uh the previous opponent's cost form and pseudo voodoo with drapion and beware which i think really opens the door for pelipper especially and frostless also becomes a bit stronger of course rapion and beware are still problems for frost last but less of a problem than cause form and and uh pseudo voodoo uh were so i expect those two to come out as well expect a little less pseudo voodoo action this time since beware is a very hard counter but it is very strong against the other five in uh yes i'm 36 team so who knows we might still see it well we have <laughs> A weird start here but it is all going all right my logic into pelipper lead here this is not too bad uh, for my logic since pelipper has to build up all the way to a hurricane to really hit my logic hard and these dragon tails are really adding up though you know my logic also kind of has to get to a hyper beam to really hurt this thing so it's a lot of energy this point though after all the dragon tail damage you can just serve that first shield he put up there was very good by the way huge hurricane hurricane shield uh, which allows him to get the two serves here very very safely might take both shields from a pelipper this early in the game this is gonna set up frost last to sweep yeah he doesn't shield here he doesn't really need to frost last with a shield advantage is just insane against uh, yes i'm 36's team he comes with drapion now this is not a counter it's a shadow this avalanche is really gonna hurt almost kills just gonna shield up this crunch here i was Kind of expecting him to switch to Sudowoodoo maybe. But I like this too. Just going to overload on energy here. And now I would expect probably Beware in the back. Maybe Celio. Both are going to take a lot of damage from whatever process throws. Yeah, this is the Beware. <laughs> Avalanche coming through. In the Zero Shields, this is not too good of a matchup. Uh, since Beware doesn't have any charge moves that can hit Frostlass in this meta. Because most, basically all run Super Power Stomp, which are resisted by... Uh, by frost last as you can see doesn't even kill oh doesn't even get to the avalanche that's a bit unfortunate a uh, bit of lag cost him the avalanche there which forced him to show his third mon which is kind of unfortunate because in a show six pick three format like this you want to keep as much information hidden as possible so if you can you don't want to show your third but he was forced now uh yes i'm 36 is gonna prepare for uh the pseudo voodoo in the next game probably inadequance just decides to run the same team here and actually gets met with the same lead we saw how this went earlier this was much in pelipper's uh disadvantage since uh it threw a hurricane and got shielded this time you're gonna see another shield but this time there's a bait which makes this uh matchup a little less good or probably worse for my logic since the pelipper will get to a hurricane area this is gonna be quite tough we'll have to shield up this surf if it wants to get to a hurricane which it does. Inadequate is gonna switch to Sudowoodo here, catching a move. Is this the Hurricane? There's no way, right? Oh yeah, it's a Weather Ball, which does a good chunk to the Sudowoodo. Oh, yes, I'm 36. Doesn't seem to have any good counters uh, for Sudowoodo as it brings in the Celio. She takes a bunch of damage from these Rock Throws. Body Slam doesn't even knock out. So the Sudo will reach the Rock Slide, which I think just got caught. Yeah, on the Drapion. That did so much damage, though. These rock throws are really adding up to, oh my god, Sudo Udo putting in work again. And I was wrong. I really thought ESM36 was gonna be prepared for the Sudo Udo and bring the Beware, but we don't see it. We don't see it. And this team almost just got swept by Sudo Udo, basically. Now it's gonna be Celia versus Frostlass. This matchup, generally in favor of Frostlass. And with this, like, health advantage, it's definitely in favor, so... Nanakun is looking pretty good here. No shield the first move, but this is fine. Basilio is still going to have to reach another water pulse. And then, like, another one to, <laughs> to actually kill. Since Nanakun still has a shield too. Going to body slam bait there though. Not going to help since it still gets out piece to the shadow ball. And Nanakun takes another 2-0 oh, right here. 
We will watch the third game as well though, since like I said, every win matters. This third game gets a pretty bad lead with Muck into his Pelipper. Uh, Thunder Punch does one shot, so he decides to switch out, saving a bunch of energy uh, on the Pelipper. Brings in the Drapion. Didn't catch the Thunder Punch, unfortunately. Incomestable wear. This is not a bad matchup for Drape. It really isn't. These Aqua Tails are really ending up in two, plus some Poison Stings. Shoot Knockout. Shoot Power will definitely hurt, though. So Inadequence does decide to shield it up. A really great shield, as it was the Super Powers. Aqua Tail will definitely knock out now if yes i'm 36 decides to no shield actually shields up though which is interesting since i wasn't expecting this thing to get to another move but it did it did have to move but since they're the buff this won't kill wow these visuals are kind of strange in this update goes straight into the aqua tail which he undercharges hoping to get a bit more farm doesn't work out though this might cause some trouble now if he doesn't reach the move but he does barely reach the aqua tail this will do some very valuable uh, chip damage yeah, this, this puts it in a range where a weather ball basically knocks out. Well, not yet. I think he needs a couple more shadow calls or wing attacks. So he goes into Beware to just tank this move. This is a resisted Dark Pulse. I don't know about that play. Thunder Punch definitely does uh, more, which the Muck goes for now. Brings the Beware kind of low. Switches into the Pelipper now. In comes the Drapion. Goes for the big Hurricane, expecting the no shield. Do we see a shield come up? Oh, it. Wow, wait. It. it I know the outcome to this game, but how how does this happen? Wait, does the crunch not KO? Does he get to the weather ball here? He doesn't get to the weather ball. Wait, 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 what's... Oh, he won this game. Is the wear gonna clutch it up? Aqua Hill hits the shield. Over farms CMP ties great energy management by inadequance here. Hitting the super power, which should KO the Drapion. Then the muck comes in. Is he gonna reach a stomp? He barely reaches a stomp, and this should knock out. Damn. Very well played by Anelicus at the end there to sweep with the bear. GG. His next opponent is TCR Zan, who just like Anelicus hasn't lost a single battle. They're both on a 9 0 streak, which will end right now because one of these battlers will have to lose. TCR Zan is running a Pokemon we haven't seen before. The Golbat, which is quite an interesting pick in this meta. I don't think it's looking too good against Inadequence and Squad though, because the Sudo and the Frost Slash just hard of all it, and everything besides Beware does pretty okay against it as well. I expect we're going to see a lot of Polyrath and Chaos form uh, from TCR Zen as they form quite a good core versus Inadequence's team. Polyrath really only has to watch out for the Pelipper, and the Chaos form really only has to watch out for uh, the Beware, and the Polyrath covers for that uh, quite uh, nicely. Uh, yeah, and Eloquence probably going to see a lot of Pelipper, probably a lot of Frostlass. And Milotic in the lead against the Frost, uh, the Polyrath actually, which is not too bad, but he's going to switch out into Pelipper to lure out the cost from probably kind of running an ABB-ish uh, line. Honestly, all three of these Pokemon don't do too well against uh, cost form, I guess, but at least you see it here and not against the Frostlass, because Frostlass probably has the worst of the three matchups. Uh, so this is uh, this is probably going uh, as planned. Already burnt a shield off the cast form. Gonna throw another weather ball, which will put it quite uh, low. Another weather ball coming through. This is a CMP tie. You can see that because there wasn't a hex coming through. TCR lets this go. Knows the IVs of his cast form perfectly. Knows that he survives this and gets to the weather ball here, which we will see shielded up. But he has another one stored. Cost form is so, so spammy. Uh, Martine in Eloquence actually going to put up another shield, though. In comes the Frostlass. Is going to save the Weather Ball on the Pelipper. Quite an interesting play, uh, to be honest, since I don't see that having much of an impact on the Polyrath later. But um, might just want to uh, save it to kill this Frostlass later. Let's see. Goes for a Surf here. This will not get a shield. Frostlass gonna get farmed down. TCR really putting all his money on the Polyrath, which I think might actually work out for him since the Frostlass uh, will need two Shadow Balls to knock it out at this point since he still has a shield. Gonna go for the Surf, which gets no shield. Just trying to get every little bit of chip in. If he can get this thing into Weather Ball range, this might actually work out for uh, an Eloquence right here. The Eric Punch takes out the Milotic, brings in the Frostlass. Polarath gonna go for a Scald here most likely, which does hurt the Frostlass. One more will knock out, unfortunately. Gets 
the attack drop, so this Avenge won't do as much, but definitely still requires a shield from the Polyrath. Switches into the Pelipper here, will do a decent chunk of damage with the Weather Ball and still has enough health to where I can probably farm down the Polyrath before itself gets farmed down. TCR tries to catch a move on the Cost Storm, it doesn't work out, just gets farmed down, goes for a Scald on the Pelipper now, and now it's a fast move. War is the Frost that's going to be able to farm down before a charge move. It is extremely close game there with a lot of a lot of switches. Very, very nice. Next matchup, we see a Cost Storm lead, which is definitely not great for Pelipper, so switches into the Milotic Incomes, Polyrath, no ideal. Polyrath, I think, has a winning matchup here at least when shields are are up uh but i think when shields are down my Lodic should be able to outpace to his hyper beam which it does and if this hits this will knock out the polarath i'm expecting this yard to let this go which he does polarath goes down uh because he kind of just wants to use the polarath to uh to his advantage when it's not on the pelipper which he did he brought the melodic very low and is now going to be able to farm it down with the pelipper which is very threatening uh, for an Anakin's at this point. Pelipper with a ton of energy is quite dangerous for both his own Pelipper and the Sudowoodoo. Gonna prompt, uh, bring in the Pelipper here. I think kind of just sacking it. Oh, eats the Hurricane, that's bad. Switches it to the Sudowoodoo, hoping to farm down the Pelipper, but it gets responded to with the cost from quite quickly. This is dangerous. Will shield up the move, and it's a Weather Ball bait. Really great bait by the opponent there. And Anakin's gonna go for the Rock Slide here, probably grabbing a shield at this point. Uh, TCR just has to rely on the on the cost from to do all the heavy lifting. We're gonna see another shield. We do, do we do not. Oh, and it's a great call because it's a weather ball. Wow, TCR going for another bait. Makes sense, I think, because two weather balls at this point basically knock out. Uh never mind. They don't really. Maybe, maybe if he can bring in his helper farmed out. No, actually. This, that was a really good call by uh, Nenequins right there. Gonna bring the Pelipper now, catches the Weather Ball. Really great catch by Nenequins. We see a lot of switches uh, in these battles. It's really fun to see, honestly. Can he farm it down before the move? He can't, so he throws the Rock Slide, hoping that this is a shield kill, because shielded moves to 1 HP is enough. It is not. The Cast Form lives and gets to the Weather Ball at like 1 HP, so wow. Extremely close game. Ooh, but where into Polarath is not what you want to see if you're in Nedoquins. But luckily, you do outpace this thing to the Super Power since it's five Shadow Claws for Super Power and six Mud Shots for the Dynamic Punch. Gets off the Super Power here and probably dips into the Pelipper, clearing his debuff and also hopefully catching a move, which didn't happen. Uh, Tarzan or is it Tarzan? Might be Tarzan. TCR is on. Uh, TCR. Uh, Keeps his energy, switching to the cost to counter the Pelipper. We've seen this before. This is actually not horrible for Pelipper. You can do quite a bit of damage here. As he goes straight for the Hurricane, which does get shielded, that is quite devastating. But also, not that bad. At least you take a shield and you don't really need that much chip on the cost from anyway to kill with uh, Beware. Since his superpower, even the buff at this point, would knock out uh, the cost form. It's gonna shield this up as an energy ball would do a solid chunk of damage. Has to keep one shield though uh, for uh, the Polyrath. So we'll know shield the next probably energy ball. Oh, this is Weather Ball. Interesting. Allows the bear to just over farm more. Bit of a misplay by, by TCR, I think, going for uh, the Weather Ball right there. In comes the Frostlass. Frostlass knows that bear just doesn't have any charge moves to hit it with. So, just gonna be free to throw the Avalanche right here. Oh my goodness. Brings in the Polyrath. Nenequins called it and just throws the Super Power on the CMP tie. So, the Polyrath will have to shield up. Does shield it up. This is such a brilliant play, actually. This was looking really rough for Nenequins. But since he got that shield, he can now just farm down the Polyrath. If he farms this down before two Skulls, he has a Shadow Ball loaded, which he would be able to hit on the Frost. I don't think, no, he's not going to farm down, so actually he has to throw the avalanche before the next move. And I think the frost is energy dry, so should be able to outpace through the shadow ball now. And he does. Damn. Really good energy management by an eloquence right there. GG. Well played. Moving on to the finals. Which is versus none other than Guido. In Anakin's and Guido, pretty good friends, teammates together with myself. We formed the Dutch Kateers. 
And there are also on or Silf Arena factions, squad, the EU emperors. These two are some of the bad, best battlers I know, and they've played each other a ton. So this is promising to be some very exciting battles. Kido's running a pretty interesting team with triple poison drapey on that muck. We've seen a lot of times with Quillfish. It's pretty spicy. You haven't seen that one before and it doesn't look too bad for Zanetiquins. His team probably does okay versus the Pseudo, the Drapion, Beware, maybe Pelipper, Milotic. I don't know. We'll see. I really hope he brings it out. The Polyrath as well could cause some trouble versus Zanetiquins as it does quite well versus four of his Pokemon and then okay versus Frostlass. Just has to watch out for the Pelipper, which Gido does have a Shadow Sudowoodoo for and a Muck to Thunder Punch it. So these are going to be some interesting battles. I'm expecting to see maybe Milotic a lot from Manetiquins. Probably Sudo Voodoo too, because it's not too bad. And then might have to bring the Pelipper to wall that Polyrath. Blue Super Wear come out into the Drapion here. We've seen this before. Not too bad for Beware. Uh, but if you debuff yourself early, this is uh, quite some trouble. Gido goes for the Aqua Tail immediately we just put a solid dent into the beware and uh, both switch to pepper at the same time this is quite interesting gonna go for the wearable bait there keep in mind these guys have played each other a ton so they know each other's tendencies and eloquence was just expecting Kido to shoot it up right there great call and another great call from eloquence too to let that weather ball go this can only be another weather ball so Nelikuns does let it go go for the hurricane right there and if Gido no shields and Nelikuns will have one switch advantage and shield advantage with the pepper which is just huge the Scrapion does get an energy lead though which is definitely not ideal but the beware does have some moves stored up which means this uh this might not be too bad. Probably expecting something in the back that counters Beware too. So probably like Polyrath. Maybe, or oh, Pelipper we've already seen. Maybe maybe like Muck. Uh, so brings in the Polyrath here, or the Beware here, instead of uh, the Myelotic. Since expecting the Myelotic to be good in the back. Cheers up the, this next Aqua Tail. Gonna over farm here. Make sure he throws in the middle of a points thing. And throws this super power onto the drip. He only should knock it out. It does, and it is... Sudo Voodoo in the back, which is quite interesting. Definitely not what I was expecting, seeing as he did switch out uh, of the lead. But this is a great situation for Nelikons right here, because he does hit the super power, then is able to farm down with the Milotic, taking game one. Next match, we see a Pelipper into Shadow Sudo. This is definitely not where you want to see the Pelipper. Incon Spoiler Wrath to the Milotic. This is not bad for Nelikons at this point, because you've just lured out the hardest counter to your Sudo Voodoo. And if Gido decides to shield the Hyper Beam here, you can just let Milotic go and farm it down with Pelipper and have Weather Balls ready for the opposing tree. We do a sh see a shield come up, so this is definitely not too bad for Inetiquins right here. Let's this uh, Dynamic Punch go. Just gonna go into Pelipper at this point. Gets a wing attack through, not gonna shield this up. If Gido switches to sudowoodoo here this could be a little bit of an issue with timer isn't up timer should be up now though still doesn't switch just gonna get farmed down throws another move probably not worth the shield at this point but does shield it up yeah maybe it is worth the shield because now you are gonna get the two weather balls uh, before the pseudo farms you down unfortunately got an attack drop though so these weather balls won't be as impressive as they should be Hilo can just shoot a uh, no shield the first one probably gonna see a shield on the next one well, we don't. Gonna bring with his own Pelipper, hoping to sweep, but Inadequence has a trick of up his sleeve with the Sudowoodoo. And yeah, this is uh, this is definitely game over at this point. So Inadequence actually taking the victory in the tournament. But Gido is actually not out just yet. Gido can still get a ticket for Continentals if he wins one game since the top two competitors of this tournament will move on and seeing how many wins the other competitors got Gido just has to win one battle versus Inadequance to have the most amount of wins of the players that only lost one uh, best of three so if Gido is able to win a game here he'll be able to move on 
as well. Beware into Para Brain. This next game is really bad for Inadequance. In comes a muck after he safe switches his own Pelipper, which is also really, really bad. But this is not horrible. The fast moves are adding up, but not doing that much. You really only have to worry about uh, the charge moves. And Muck will take a decent chunk of your charge moves as well. Goes for the weather ball right here. Tito shields it up and is able to get to another Thunder Punch right before the Hurricane, which will get shielded up too. Uh, now, Inadequance can go for the Hurricane right here to take out the Muck or for the weather ball bait. Is Hito gonna call this? He does call it. Let's it go. Inadequance goes for another weather ball here right before the Thunder Punch. Do we see a no shield? We do. Giving up switch advantage here. Saving? Wow. Saving the Pelipper at this point. Interesting. I like that a lot uh, since you still save some health. Uh, you still save enough health to put this Polarath in a bad spot later. He's gonna shield up. Or no oh, shield, of course. He doesn't have shields. He's gonna no shield. The Skull doesn't get the drop. Whoa, unfortunately. Doesn't throw the avalanche. That is interesting. Probably hoping to farm this down with Beware. Overload on a bunch of energy so you can start stomping that Pelipper. Okay, okay. I like that. I like that. Bunch of energy stored now on the Beware. We're gonna go for the stomps. This will do a decent chunk, but not that much. Another stomp going through. If he can catch a Hurricane now on Pelippers, might be winnable for, uh, for an adequate. He doesn't though, because this is definitely the weather ball actually. Yeah, this is the weather ball. Brings in his own Pelipper. Gonna weather ball the opposing Pelipper. This won't knock out, but we'll put it quite low. Oh my god. CMP tie. Weather ball comes through. Is Hido gonna win this? <laughs> Simultaneous knockout. Damn. Okay, next match. We have another bad lead for an adequance with the muck. Into Pelipper, it comes Polarath once in Elegant switches into uh, the Milotic. We've seen this before, not the worst matchup for Milotic in the Zero Shields, because you can Hyperbeam this before they hit two dynamic punches. But if they shield, you will definitely lose. You go straight for the Hyperbeam here. Are we gonna see a no shield this time? Shields it up once again. Interesting. This is kind of a repeat of uh, game one, where. or game two. An earlier game where the Polyrath also no shielded or shielded and then got farmed down for with the Pelipper and it didn't really work out for Hido last time, but is it gonna work out this time? Last time it was a Sudowoodoo in the lead, I think. Uh this time it's a muck. So there's a little difference. Gonna hit the second scald again. Yeah, it's basically the same as that one game. Gonna go for the hurricane right here. Are we gonna see a no shield from the muck? Yo, huge, huge hurricane right there. Now, it's all up to the beware. If we, if we see a Pelipper in the back now, though, this is uh, looking quite over. Yeah, even with a shield advantage, I think beware just loses this matchup, unfortunately. Still gonna try, though. Beware really is a monster. In my practice tournaments, this is, this is the Pokemon I, I love using the most. Superpower dip is just so effective, but... You know, once you have to start hitting these stomps or like a Pelipper, it becomes quite sad how little these moves do. Stomp is just a bad move, doesn't kill, has to farm down and throw the move to win the game, but can't farm down, loses this match, still wins the tournament, and because of that one win, Hido actually also secured a ticket to Continentals, or yeah, to Continentals. So congrats to both Inadequance and Hido for the ticket to Continentals, and Massive congrats to Inadequence for the ultimate victory of the Dutch regionals. Thank you very much again, Inadequence, for sending me these battles. These were a blast uh, to look at. If, if you enjoyed these battles as well, make sure to drop a like on the video. And also, please check out Inadequence's Twitch and YouTube channel. Go give him a follow. Go give him a sub. Go leave him a comment, all right? Go into his YouTube and Twitch chat and, and just say... Ludicolo is better than Candle, please. That'd be very much appreciated. Thank you very much. See you guys in the next video. Good luck to your battle trainers.